Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a, a short Q&A video on a question that popped up after my last video. And someone asked me, what's the difference between a raw file and a JPEG file? So, without any further ado, raw versus JPEG. Italian 2, engines, 35, 40, 34, and 27, ladder 40, and safety 1, house fire, 3312-18-5. Welcome to WGK Public Safety Images. I am a public safety photographer in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and this is my channel, and I use it to post response videos. I also post videos that are all about different departments, companies, equipment, things like that. And then I also post Q&A videos where I try and answer questions that I frequently get as a public safety photographer. I would just ask that you like and subscribe, but otherwise, let's get on to the video. So in the last video, uh, when I was talking about setting up your camera, one of the things I mentioned is that your camera uh, typically can capture either a RAW file or a JPEG file or both. And I recommend that new photographers typically try and capture both because each of them has an advantage and a disadvantage. But a fair question is, so what's the difference? Put pretty simply, a RAW file is basically just a data file. It's not actually even an image file. It just contains all the data that your camera captures when you push the shutter button. All that goes to a file and is saved. A JPEG file is actually a standardized graphic image file, right? It's used by everyone. Your computer can read them, things like that. And it takes all that data and it converts it into an image so that you can easily view it on any number of devices, your phone or a computer. JPEG is, is standardized, um, but it is compressed. And that compression, you lose some of the data and some of the information. What this all means to you as a photographer is, what do you want to save? So again, you click the shutter button, you're capturing a RAW file, you're capturing all the image. So you're going to see a couple of things. One, RAW files tend to be a lot larger than the JPEG your camera will produce. Uh, I have an X-T5 now. Typical raw file size is anywhere from 40 to 50 to, to 60 uh, megabytes per image. Producing high quality JPEGs with that same camera, it's creating files that are much smaller in the 10 to 15 megabyte um, range. If you're using or if you're just capturing raw, ultimately you have to convert it to some type of graphic image. Today's cameras are set up so they'll do that for you. Uh, and when we typically talk about taking a picture or you're setting your camera up so that you're capturing both the raw and a JPEG image, it's capturing all the in information, saving it in the raw file, and then it is producing a JPEG image automatically in the camera. That's how you end up with two separate files. If you just capture raw, you will need to have separate editing software where you can upload all the raw data. And then from there, you can make the adjustments, whatever you deem necessary. And then you will output that to a JPEG file. So really the difference is, do you wanna create the JPEG or do you want your camera to create the JPEG? And for beginners, having your camera do it is a whole lot easier than you doing it. Um, like I said, it'll save you software costs and a lot of time. I'd also add that today's cameras are pretty good. Actually, they're very good at producing JPEGs and there's a lot of adjustability built into the cameras. So you can go in and tell the camera what you want the image to, to emphasize, You know whether you want to increase clarity or, or change some other setting. And it'll do that for you all automatically for every picture you take. Today, a lot of the manufacturers also include multiple picture profiles or 
uh, picture styles or if you're a Fujifilm user, um, a film simulation. And it's just several different standardized JPEG producing algorithms, if you will. Um, so you'll have an idea what it'll look like based on the profile. Every time you take the picture, your camera captures all the data and then processes it using that particular profile. So the JPEG hopefully comes out looking like you want it to look. So if the camera can do all that by itself, why would I ever want to shoot raw? Well, a couple reasons. Um, one, you might like the photo editing process. I didn't think I would, but as it turns out, I rather enjoy the photo editing process. I also think I'm better at determining what looks like a good photo than my camera does. That may be more me. Raw, because it captures and holds all the original data, gives you a little bit more um, versatility or variability if you want to make adjustments. And, and I'll show you that in just a second. But um, exposure ranges, things like that, greater latitude uh, if you have all the, all the data than if you're just working with a JPEG that has discarded 70, 80% of the data, you may not be able to adjust the photo exactly the way you like. So folks shooting raw typically want to be able to do all the adjusting themselves. And like I said, I have some standard profiles. I even save them as standard profiles um, that allows me to, to apply them. But lots of times, even with those, I'll go and look at each one individually and then adjust it the way I like. And if you're using raw data, uh, you get a lot more control. And like I said, you can make greater adjustments, if you will. With the JPEGs, you're kind of stuck with whatever um, data your camera decided to use and everything that was discarded is just gone and you can't use it. So if you're shooting just raw, there's an extra step. You have to take those files that are going to load to your SD card just like your JPEGs will, but you're going to have to download them to a computer and then use some additional software to process them. If you're shooting JPEGs, they're saved as JPEG images on your card. You can download them directly. You can view them. You can share them. Today, a lot of cameras will talk directly to your phone. So you can be out, take a picture, download it directly to your phone, email it to someone, you know, post it to Instagram. You can do all that right away. If you're just shooting the RAWs, you're going to have to do the processing first. And then that photo processing will ultimately allow you to create uh, a JPEG image that you can then go and do the same thing. So if you're going to just shoot raw, you're going to need to get some type of software so that you can edit those and then output those edited images to a JPEG file. There are a variety of ones out there. Probably the most popular is Adobe Lightroom. Second is Capture One, and that's what I use. So that's what you're seeing on the screen now is uh, Capture One. Neither of those are free. So if you want to use either of those, you're going to have to pay for the software. If you're determined, there are some free raw editing software packages out there. Um, they're available both for Windows and on Macs. And there's even some web-based ones if, some, if that's something that interests you. But the point is you will need some type of software that you can view and then edit and output your raw images on your computer. So in Capture One here, I've loaded up a couple of images. The one on the screen is actually a RAW file. You can see that down at the bottom. Actually, Fuji's RAW file uses the extension RAF. But I've also included a JPEG of that same image. So when we closely examine the RAW file, the details there, if you zoom in, you'll see the detail. However, I always think it looks a little dull and not as sharp as it could be. The JPEG of that same image looks a little brighter and a little sharper. As I had mentioned earlier in the video, RAW files allow you some greater variability when it comes to adjusting what you have. For example, in this one, I can take the RAW file and turn the exposure all the way down till it's almost completely 
dark. If I do the same thing to the JPEG file, you'll notice it doesn't get as dark. It works the other way if you lighten the exposure. This just means you can do a little bit more with a RAW file than you can with a JPEG in a photo editing software. Again, I can also create my own presets. I take a lot of pictures of apparatus outdoors, typically in good light, and so I have some fairly standard presets I will go and add to my RAW files as soon as I upload them. Those presets include some sharpening and a little bit of adjustment of the contrast, brightness, and exposure levels. Once I've added that preset, I can then go in and do the fine tuning on my images until I get to where I like them. And at that point, I can export them as a JPEG file. So it really kind of comes down to how much control do you want to have and how much time do you want to put in to processing your photos. So just quickly, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. So raw files, a lot larger, needs a lot more storage, especially if you're maintaining them all. Um, five times the amount of data storage that you're going to need if you were just using typical JPEG files. However, those raw files give you greater latitude when you're adjusting uh, and processing. Uh, most of those softwares are non-destructive. so. Uh, you can make all the adjustments you want. You output it to a JPEG. Um, if you decide you don't like it, you can go back and start all over. You haven't lost anything. JPEGs, conversely, a lot smaller files. They're universal. Everything reads them. Um, you can share them immediately. And you can set them up the way you'd like uh, in most modern cameras. And hopefully that's going to work for 90% of your photos. So that's going to wrap up this quick look at raw files versus JPEGs and what the difference is. Hopefully you found this video interesting or helpful uh, as you're going forward. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you have any other questions or I left something out or you think you'd like to hear something on a different topic, please feel free to leave that in the comments and I'll see if I can get to that um, as soon as possible. Otherwise, we'll just see you in the next video. Bye.